Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk about string variables, how you can initialize them, how you can use them, what they're there for, and uh, then I'll just go through some practical examples with you. But then let's get right into it. If you have some experience with programming, you probably know what variables are. Variables can hold different kind of values. Um, in some programming languages, you have to define what kind of variable it is. It can be a string variable or it can just hold a number or an array or an object. It's about the same with Power Automate. And today we're going through string variables that can hold any kind of text. You can use the value of these variables in different parts of your Power Automate flow, either to have the same value in different actions or maybe to manipulate that value if you need it. Let's say you have different SharePoint actions where you get files from the same library and you don't always want to enter the same library name over and over again. So you just put it in one variable and then you just insert that variable always into that action. The advantage is if you ever change the flow or you change the library name, then you just have to change the one variable uh, value and the change will affect all of your actions. Let's start by just defining a variable. I'll click here on new step. I use the built-in functions and i go here to variable and to initialize variable. First, I will name my variable, so my variable. And today we're going to talk about string variables. So it will be a string variable. And right now my variable does not have a value yet. I can basically put in there anything I want. I can put text in here. I can put any number in here, um, even larger text. And so on. With string variables, you're quite flexible what it can hold. Um, the only thing you should consider a string variable is a string variable. So even if you put a number in there, you cannot use it to count things because it's considered a text and not a number. Please always keep that in mind. So let's go back to simply empty this one here and I'll make a new step, a compose action. And here I can just enter my variable. If I save this flow now and execute it, this compose action should just be empty because also my variable is empty. Let's make a test. Let's go to manually test run flow. And if we look at the outputs here, the output is empty, what we expected. Of course, we can already set something in here, run this test again. And now the compose action will change. So now it really outputs the value of the variable. That's what we want. Let's go back to edit. Then we'll delete this one here. So this one will be uh, empty. And now let's see if we can set up another value for the variable. Let's go back to built in, then to variables and set variable. Here I can select my variable and enter another value. I'll go to new step to compose and now I'll put this variable again. So at first I deleted again the value of the variable. So the first compose is empty. After that, I set another value for this variable and if I look at the compose, it puts out this value. So you always have to consider at which stage of your flow 
your variable has what value. And that can also be tricky when you use it in uh, loops, but that's a topic for another time. What I can also do is to append something to a string variable. Because always when I set another value, it simply deletes the value that has been already stored and just replaces it with another value. But what if I just want to add something after it? Then I have to use the append function, uh, append action. Let's go back to built-in variables. And here we have append to string variable. Now I choose my variable and I would just add um, and I will output this again. I'll make another test and let's go. So the first compose is empty because if we initialize it and we don't put anything in, it's empty. That's good. Now we set the variable to something else, to another value. It puts it out perfectly. And now we append to the string variable, so we add something to it. And, and here we can see it's doing it. Of course, you always have to watch out a bit of the exact punctuation and everything because it just adds it right next to it. So if you want to make any more complicated sentences or um, any other structure, you have to also consider this, that it will always append right next to the end of your previous uh, variable value. Now, appending to a string variable is very useful, but you have to be careful because there is a size limit. It's about 130,000 characters. I'll put the link in the description to the Microsoft site where they show all the size limitations. I would say, let's start over a practical example. Let's delete everything we have here. We don't need that, this and this. So let's say you have multiple SharePoint actions. Let's go to standard, SharePoint, and let's take the get files properties only. We choose the site address. The library name, let's use the toy company. Let's take new step and we use again the get files properties only use again the side and the time company and so on so let's just pretend you have multiple sharepoint actions but some of the properties are the same so if you ever make a change to that you will have to go into each single action and then let's say change the library name or change the side address and so on depending on the size of the flow this can be a bit tedious and you can help yourself with variables. Instead of simply putting this in one by one, you can define a variable. You can name it, let's say, site address. And it's a string variable. I'll just copy this one over here and into here. And now instead of simply selecting the site address, we'll use the enter custom value and input the site address. The problem with this is that you always have to know the library name too, because the system does not know what the variable will be and so what side address you intend to retrieve values from. So we'll need another value. And 
let's call this library. That's a top company. Enter custom value. Let's make a test. First, manually, then continue, run flow. And it works. If I know how the site address and the library is named, I can easily easily manipulate this via the variables and I don't have to go into each action itself to change it. I can also manipulate this in between. Let's say I put an action in between here. I set the variable of the library within here to documents and then test this again. What happens now? The first get files um, gets all the files from the library named Toy Company. And the second one, because I've changed the value of this variable in between, will now get all the files from the library document. So depending on your flow, you can create some conditions where you can change the value in between to get the values from other libraries or site address or whatever, depending on what you need. I hope this was a bit clear to you. And now let's try to get into a bit more advanced concept. I'll go back to edit. And first I just delete everything again. Let's start from scratch. Let's pretend you have a workflow and depending on the value of one of your variables, it will send three different emails. Let's do this. Um, let's create one variable. And now we'll use the switch, con the switch control. So let's say my variable has condition one. And then what happens when my variable has con uh, equals two or when my variable equals three. And I want to send always different emails when one of these conditions apply. So let's go to add action. I'll just send an email. As you can imagine, if you ever want to change anything on these emails, because you can also change the design if you use the HTML, it's very tedious. It's very annoying and you can use the variables to simplify this. Let's create a few other variables.
So instead of using three email actions, I will simply add a new step here after the switches to send an email. And I will fill this in with my recipient, my subject and the body, of course, or email content. And then in my switch action, I will delete all the actions here. Don't need you or you or you. And I will simply add set variable. And let's put the default to terminate. Because otherwise, on default, if I don't set any variable values, uh, this action will simply fail. I know it looks now a bit more than it was before, because now you have in each case three actions that sets variables instead of one email action because it's still a very simple flow. But believe me, the more complicated your flows get, and the more conditions and switches you have, the easier this concept will be because you only have to set up one action and it's just the variables inside that get changed. It will make it also a bit more cleaner and easier to read if you have a very large flow with many different actions and uh, conditions. I hope you found this bit helpful. Just let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions or just tell me how you use the string variable or you have other concepts that may be even better than this one. And as always, I just wish you a great day.